and that was the message. It was like, you have to, at some point, be uncomfortable with, with what you want to do. Because if you continue to set yourself in a comfortable a comfortable goal or a comfortable setting, like that's what you're going to achieve. You're going to achieve what you've done before. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. Now, there are burn episodes that I get excited about, and then there are burn episodes that are special. And the reason why this one is special, many, many reasons, is because Easton Stick does not like doing interviews like this. <laughs> so I had to, had to loosen him up a little bit. So it's hard to believe when you think of how fast time goes, and so many of you, you hear me talk about the importance of relationships. And Easton and I now go back six years all the way to when he was a freshman at North Dakota State University, and an incredible football career, incredible statistics, couple of things, vision that we'll talk about, but you know the burn. We don't talk about statistics. We're not talking about wins and losses and national championships that, that have been won. We really want to understand how people think and how they show up, and Easton and I have developed an unbelievable relationship over the last six years, and one of the things that I think is so unique about you, Easton, is the way that you show up. And, and I'm going to say it, that the times we've been on the sidelines together, and you get that fire in your eyes sometimes, and I'll tell you guys, there were times where I would see that fire and he'd be like, Ben, I don't need you to talk to me or say anything to me. I got a job to do. So tell me where that fire comes from. Um, I think it starts with my faith. And I think I, I, as I got older and, and, and learned a little bit who, who I was and who I wanted to be, uh, that became more clear to me that, that when I was centered and focused on my faith, then the rest of my life kind of fit where where it needed to fit and so it starts there and then it goes to my family and uh, they're everything to me and have watching my parents and, and really my grandparents all my extended family they've made so many sacrifices um, in their own lives so that myself and, and my younger brother could be successful and um, and we weren't spoiled but there were definitely days that felt that way like they, they made sure that that we needed had everything we needed and then some and then um, I think watching my parents work and, and seeing that work ethic and, and uh, you know, my dad was an athlete and, and so just being around him and, and hearing, you know, the way he thought about things um, and, and really laying out to me like, look, if you want to be good, uh, I'm not going to push you and, and make you do anything, but here's, here's what it looks like. And, and if you really want to be good, this is, this is what needs to be put into it. And so, um, yeah, it, it really all goes back to uh, faith and family for me. Yeah. So I love hearing that because I know how important faith is and I know your relationship with Carson Wentz and the AO1 Foundation and what I think is unique, and we don't have to dive into it. You guys saw the episode with Cole, uh, but I think it's so unique that like you don't just say faith, you actually live that. And so I, I think that's an incredible thing about you. It's, it's not just words, there's always action. And so one thing I want to talk about that comes down to not just putting down words, but taking action. And there's another time he's going to get upset with me is May 11th, 2017. Yeah. So I'm going to have to share this because as humble as he is, he's not going to want to talk about it, but he gave me permission to do this. Will Compton and I came to North Dakota State mm -hmm. and it really wasn't even me. It was nothing I said. So I know Will's going to give me trouble. <laughs> Will, you are getting all, all the, the credit. credit. Okay, cop, you get all the credit. That had nothing to do with me. And Will spoke about goals and vision and purpose. And you made a conscious effort. May the 11th, 2017, it was after your sophomore year, you had two more years. And I'm not gonna read all these because some of these things are personal, but one, I, I wanna just pull this out. And it, two, academic All-American, right? So, so across the board, not just doing things on the field, but in the classroom as well, which you became an academic All-American. But here's an amazing goal, because I think oftentimes we protect ourselves in life, right? So we have a belief, we have that burn, we have our faith. You've always been a hard worker. But to believe in this way was truly incredible. So Easton wrote down most wins by a quarterback in FCS history, 48 ties as a starter, 49 total. And so here's what's incredible. You write down this goal. You had to go 29-1 and one yeah. in order to, to hit that goal. 29 and 1. And in his final 30 games as starting quarterback for North Dakota State, you went 29 and 1. And what I, what I would love, because I know you don't want to talk about the goals, so that's not how you are. How important is it, right? So, so talk to that college athlete right now who's like, 
protecting himself, right? He's sitting there going, gosh, I don't, I don't really want to put down the big goal. I want to put down the right. small goal. How important is it to set a really big goal for yourself? I think it's huge. And like, like you said, I remember you and Will came in and-, and Will, it was all Will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all you comp. Uh, and, and, and that was the message. It was like, you have to, at some point, be uncomfortable with, with what you want to do. Because if you continue to set yourself in a comfortable, a comfortable goal or a comfortable setting, like that's what you're going to achieve. You're going to achieve what you've done before. And we had, obviously North Dakota State had been really successful for a long time. Um, and I got to be part of it, but we were coming off the first time we hadn't won a national championship. That's when I, I wrote these goals. It was that off season and, and guys were fired up and, and wanted to go improve. And, um, and the whole thing was, how can we make it better? How, how, how can it, when, when I leave in two years, let's make this this thing better than it ever has been and so um it was really uncomfortable for me to sit down and, and write some really big things like uh like you said and and, and winning a national championship and, and doing all these things and uh you know making an nfl roster like that stuff was uncomfortable for me uh because you know that, that that's two years away it, it's not like you know and, and it's not something that you always have control over but i knew if i put something big like that then i had no other choice but to wake up every single day and, and figure out how I'm gonna get better. And that was really the first time in my life that I had taken that step to, to really be uncomfortable with, um, but also be honest, like these are all things like you wanna be successful, you wanna achieve really great things, but it, but it's it's one thing to want that, it's another thing to, to tell somebody and, and to put it on paper. And that, so it was uncomfortable for me to do that, but once it was on paper, I had no choice. Like, I, you know, I, I was gonna go after this thing with, with all I had. So I hope you take this as advice from Easton. Don't give up on your goals. You have to lock in, you gotta focus, and you have to choose to follow through and do the work. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to bring up, and this is, just blew me away about you. So let's go all the way back to Carson's senior year, and I still tell Coach Kleiman, I'm like, why in the world did you bring me in? Like, you guys have just won four straight national championships. What are you bringing me in for? And so I felt so blessed to be a part of the amazing culture where, where relationships like this are established. Yeah. It's not about wins and losses. People see all the bling and the rings. Like, we don't wear the rings, right? It's like, this is, this is what's most important, the relationships. And what I saw unfold was truly incredible. And I, I wrote a Forbes article about it one time, and but I'm really glad that we can share it here, is Carson is a senior. Everybody's like, God, this guy's got all the tools. He's going to be an NFL quarterback. Five games into the year, he breaks his wrist. And you come in, you're a redshirt freshman. You run the table, 8-0 as the starting quarterback. And then all of a sudden, here we are preparing for the national championship down in Frisco, Texas. And the news comes out, Carson Wentz has been cleared to play. And once again, this is one of those stories. Easton's not going to tell it, so I'm, I'm going to... I'm going, to, I'm going to give an opportunity to, to answer and to tell the, the story of it or the point of it that I, I think the highlight of it. But for me, I think of you going to Coach Hedberg and you going to Coach Kleiman and saying, this is Carson's team. Let him start. And once again, for all of whether it's a young athlete, whether it's somebody in business who's trying to make it all about them, help me understand because I still look back on that. It is so rare that somebody would do that, right? Because so many people would say, no, 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 this is my team now. Yeah. Like, is his wrist really okay? And so you make that decision. Tell, tell us about that decision and the importance of being a great teammate yeah. in life. And I think that's, that's, that's what I learned through the process is you said it's the relationships. And it's about understanding your role in the team. And uh, as soon as I got to North Dakota State, that that was the big thing. It's like everybody's got a role in this thing. It doesn't matter if, like you said, you're Carson Wentz and going to be an NFL quarterback, or you're, uh, you know, a freshman uh, walk on that's just trying to figure out where the dining hall is. Like everybody's got a role in this thing, um, and you just help pull people along, get behind the goal, get behind the message, and just help guys uh, develop. And that's what Carson did with me. You know, I showed up and lived in his basement, you know, the summer before school started and, and he really invested time in me and we, we built a, a really good relationship. And, um, I know I wouldn't have been ready to play in any of those games. Um, I still don't know if I quite was, <laughs> but I could at least, at least hand the ball off and, and run around a little bit, uh, because of Carson and what he had invested in me. And uh, Carson waited three years to be the starting quarterback there. He put his time in. He learned from Brock and, and other guys, like, what the culture means and, and, like you said, what it means to be a, a teammate, a good teammate. And so uh, seeing him and hearing those stories, 
Um, and he finally had his sh- chance as, as the you know senior captain, and, and he's the guy now we can all ra- rally behind. And gets banged up, and, um, and and we talked about it as soon as it happened. Like, hey, I'm going to do everything I can, like w- as a team, like we're going to give you a chance to get healthy. And we knew we could. And and so when he got the green light, I mean, it it was it was really difficult as a competitor, you know, because hmm. you put so much time in, and and that's the national championship game. Like you, as a competitor, like that's what you want. You're on ESPN. Like, like, like this is this is it. Like this is the pinnacle for our division. Like this is where I want to play. Um, but going back to putting everybody else above yourself and the servant leadership mentality, and and I was still trying to figure all that out. But I knew uh, this Carson was a captain. Like he's he's the the best player in FCS football. Like, he needs to be out there. This is his opportunity. And so um, coach sat down and we had that discussion and uh, coach made the, the right decision. As hard as it was uh, for me personally, you understand, uh, you know, what the culture was about. And I think um, that's like you said, in, in anything, if you can learn to, to be a good teammate and to invest in others, I think you're going to end up getting more out of it, um, you know, than, than you're giving to anyone else. So it's actually incredible the way you just finished that answer. And this is this is the last thing I'm going to ask you. Because I know it's not your favorite thing to do interviews like this. And I appreciate you doing this. Especially knowing how much I care about you. You said invest in others. So you're a young guy. You're a bachelor, right? Yeah. You're, you're in yeah. Los Angeles. Right. right? You could be doing so many things. And you just told me that you want to have a camp back in Fargo. So you want to give back to kids, right? So... Once again, it's living that walk of faith. It's living that walk of service. It's doing it as a teammate. So tell us about how important it is for you to now give back to kids. Yeah, I think it's huge. Like, I just think growing up as a kid and and watching TV and seeing these athletes or whatever your your deal is. Like for me, it was sports. And so watching guys, you know, you know, I grew up in Nebraska, so watching the Huskers and, and watching NFL football, I was like, man, like how cool would that be to get a chance to to do that. And so like, as I grew older and like you, I think you just, you realize like you put yourself in your own shoes way back. And I was like, man, those guys had such a huge impact on my life. And I didn't even know them. Like, I'm just watching them on TV and and they're, I'm in the front yard pretending to be them, right? Like that's where it all starts and that's why it's fun. And so now like gaining a little bit of perspective and realizing like, yeah, I have an opportunity to do something similar. And regardless of the scale, or if it's you know one one kid that that really loves football or, or learns you know how to be a good teammate because uh, we interacted or, or watched me play, man, that that's enough. Like that's awesome. So uh, yeah, hopefully can have a chance to to get back and whether it's here, Fargo, Omaha, all the communities that you know I've got to be a part of. I, I just think it's a, important to invest in people because I know, like I said, going back to my family and my parents, they invested in me and made sacrifices for me. And, and without that, I don't have this opportunity. And so, um, you know, hopefully the time is right and, and I can do the same thing. Well, guys, I, I hope what you've gathered from this is it's okay to have that fire in your eyes and to cut it loose. But when you cut that fire loose, do it for other people. It's not just about you. And honor your family and honor your faith and do the things that are important. And don't be afraid to challenge yourself to think big, but to also give back for the right reason. So, Brother, you know how much I love you. I will always be in your corner. I appreciate you and uh, look forward to another great season ahead. Let's do it, man.